welcome back to Vintage Vibes Automotive. I'm Connor, and if you haven't been on this channel before, this is the Mark 1 Golf project. This was a free project that I got off Facebook Marketplace. To get you up to speed with what we've done so far, if you haven't seen the previous videos, we've searched through what parts we have for the Mark 1 Golf and then put them back on the chassis, as well as painting the chassis of the Mark 1 Golf to make sure it's watertight over winter. We've took the 20 valve engine home and rebuilt it to a nice standard, ready for it to go in the Mark 1. So here we are about to put the engine in the Mark 1 Golf. Surprisingly, this 20 valve engine fits in surprisingly well for saying it was never designed to fit in this car. There's a couple of things I'm gonna tell you to make your life a bit easier if you're doing this conversion, which are, the brake booster can actually stay on. You don't need to remove that, but you must remove the tip from the turbo because I left the tip on and I couldn't get it in properly, as you will see later on in this time-lapse. There is a lower gearbox engine mount which is attached to the chassis near the gearbox tunnel and I didn't realise it actually come off the car so make sure you unbolt that before because it can be a little bit difficult to get in. The engine doesn't sit right as you'll see in the time lapse. Whatever downpipe you have fabricated for this make sure it's in the car first because if not it can be a real pig to get on. Uh, I didn't want to risk that so I put it in first with the exhaust attached. There's actually not a lot of clearance in there, so I found that even though I had the downpipe in and the engine in, it was still quite hard to get both of them attached, having to rock the engine back and forth to get it to fit properly. For the engine side mount, you don't actually have a lot of room, so it's really, really difficult to get the bolt and nut through. So just be careful when doing that. There is room, you can do it, but careful you don't drop anything into your timing belt side of your engine. I'll show a short video on this soon to show you the clearance issues. Make sure you have the drive shafts in the correct place roughly first before you fit them. My drive shafts were hanging down and this made it a bit of a problem for me to get them in later. Apart from that though, the engine fits surprisingly well, like it all bolts together as it should. I'm using an O2O -O gearbox as I've previously mentioned. Um, I'm surprised how well it fit. It actually didn't take long to put it in the engine bay. This is what I mean, there really isn't a lot of space in here. But I had to cut up my timing belt cover a little bit to get it to fit, but I didn't want to get rid of it completely. There's also more video of looking around the engine bay to show like how much room you have to play with. So that last video you just seen was actually in sometime in February and we did the engine swap. I did that straight after the video of building the 1.8 turbo uh, because I wanted to get it out of the way and out of my garage so I could work on other projects. But in terms of the Mark 1 Golf getting any sort of treatment, it has had none. It's just sat there for two months. So today, that's what I'm going to do. I've got some nice bits that to fit, such as these lovely fake split rims, the good old Lenzo Classic. These were actually £90. But the thing that's really been taking up my time is this Mark 4 Golf. It's a PD-130 and I've had to swap the engine. But it also means I do have a spare PD-130 engine, which I could be using soon. Right, let's see how this sounds then. People say Mark IV Golfs are just breakers. To be honest, I hate breaking cars. Like, I, this was my car and this was Anthony's car. And it has actually come to the end of its life because it was very, very rotten underneath. All the scrapyards aren't as good as they used to be, at least around these areas anyway. So this is how I've learned. Yeah. I now know how to completely tear this apart and I still know nothing. <laughs> what I'm gonna be doing is fitting these fake split rims, the Lenzo Specials. <laughs> To this. I was going to fit them on the Mark II, but I kind of like how the Mark II looks with these on. The first thing I'm going to do is bleed the rear brakes and then the front, and I'm going to fit the wheels at the same time. Then what I'm going to do is connect the drive shafts to the gearbox and then the gear linkages, so I don't have to have a plank of wood at the front of the car all the time. Now that the engine's in, the main objective in this video is to sort of just get everything working so that when I get the conversion loom, I can just plug it in and hopefully start the engine up. That would be in a perfect world, but that's likely to not be a reality. So what's just happened is when we went to bleed the brakes, 
the nipple has broke. But also if, he, if Anthony puts his foot on the floor, oh, it actually does sort of. Put it again? It is. Nah. It's, the cylinder is probably seized as well, uh, as well as the nipple. So that's something to change in the future. I don't have that right now for this video, but it will be changed soon. The rest of the car though is actually bled. This was actually the last one to do. It was out of order because you should do passenger back, driver's back, passenger front, and then the driver's front to bleed all the brakes correctly because the master cylinder is normally near the driver's side front near the brake pedal. This being a Mark 1, it's the opposite side. It's on the passenger side, so that's slightly wrong. You can undo your passenger side drive shaft from the engine bay, but the driver's side drive shaft, you have to be underneath it to undo it. The drive shafts have now been connected. I'm sorry there wasn't much footage of this, but this has been an absolute pain in the bottom to get on. Basically, I put the engine in first and the drive shafts were hanging down. So then there wasn't enough clearance to get the drive shafts back into the drive shaft cup. So I had to loosen the engine mounts and one side of the wishbone to get these in. This side, the passenger side, wasn't too bad as I just rocked the engine back and forth and got it in. But the driver's side, I had to take one of the wishbone bolts out, pull the hub, out and then I was able to get the drive shaft in. Also, if you're doing this engine conversion, there is a gearbox bracket right at the back, right near your linkages here, um, and it's bolted to the floor. I didn't realize it was bolted to the floor, so I just plonked the engine in uh, and it didn't fit very well and it was hard to get things to fit in place. Uh, but now I know that, I wish I'd done that first and detached the, the gearbox bracket because then it would have fitted in the engine bay a lot easier. The drive shafts are now bolted back up, but the problem I have now is this. There's a huge amount of resistance and this, I wasn't sure what it was straight away. I thought maybe I've done something wrong with the drive shaft, but let me show you. They actually scrape on this part of the caliper, uh, which has been scraping on the wheel. So what I need to do is I need to file this bit here down so they fit flush. It's only a little bit, it won't affect the braking but it's better than it grinding away the wheels. So the throttle cable you need is actually from a Mark II Golf 1.3 carb engine and I'll put the link in the description if you need to buy one of these. The only thing is with this throttle cable is it doesn't actually fit in the grommet hole properly uh, so I've got to find a solution for this. Make sure you get the downpipe on first before you fit the engine. The downpipe is really really difficult to get on so make sure that is in the car before you put the engine in. As you can see it's very twisty and bendy. Trying to fit the the top of the exhaust downpipe to the actual turbo was really difficult while it was in the car. To get the downpipe fitted to the turbo, I had to release the lower engine mounts and rock the engine back and forth until it could fit. I actually had another person help me to get the downpipe on it. Okay, so I've just fitted the clutch cable. I'm not sure what's the best way, but for now I'll put it around the bulkhead and then down into here. Now I'm just going to do the clutch side of it and we should have a working clutch then. I'm fitting a Mark 1 Golf clutch cable because it's what come with the car, but I've heard you can fit a Mark 2 and Mark 3 Golf clutch cable as these are automatic and adjust over time as the clutch wears. The clutch, the accelerator and the brake pedal have all been sorted. The next thing to do is gear linkages. I've just seen that this selector here, if I just put it in reverse, I think that does, it fits in place. But then if I take it out of reverse, it's hitting on the turbo. And kind of panicked me for a bit because I thought, you know, I've everyone says they can fit an O2O gearbox, but then now this is rubbing on the turbo, I can't get out of reverse. 
for now I'm gonna have to go and have a rethink about the the gear selector I think it's because the engine isn't mounted properly it needs to be pushed down more it needs to be pushed down more to actually get the gear selector fit in place now I'm just collecting all the grounds and the battery cables that I can see to see if I can get any signs of life from the engine or the ignition It's not a massive detail, but I think the minor details make quite a difference. I mean, when you get a new car, you have to put new number plates on it, right? I mean, get rid of the old, in with the new. Doing a bit of framing, putting nice new shiny parts on to distract you from the horrible paint. Really though, when you see a nice car on the road and it's got disgusting old tatty number plates, you think, do you know what, they're inexpensive to replace. You could just change them for about 12 quid on eBay. The thing that's stopping me now is not knowing too much about wiring and electric so I'm going to take the dash out and then have a look try and ground anything I can see that's the ground or maybe get somebody in to help that would probably be the preferred method with the gear linkages sorted the engine loom converted and the the shifter sorted out this thing should be running and driving so hopefully that will be in the next video see you soon